Hey everyone, are you tired of boring old registration forms? Want to create a smooth, seamless sign-up flow for your app? In this awesome YouTube series, I'm going to show you how to spice up your app's registration process using Spring Boot. In this first video, we're diving into the front-end magic, HTML, CSS, and JS, to make your forms pop. But that's just the beginning. Future episodes will blow your mind with user roles, secure endpoint, we're talking email verification, confirmation emails, the works. By the end, you'll have the skills to create a sign-up process that will leave your users begging for more. Keep watching. To get started building our sign-up form, let's open up Visual Studio Code, which is a great free editor for web development. I have the VS Code workspace open here. Now I'll create a new file called signup.html where we'll write our HTML code. Inside signup.html, I'll start with a standard HTML structure. To let the browser know we mean business with HTML5, we kick things off with the doctype HTML declaration. It's like saying, hey browser, this is HTML5 magic about to happen. Within our HTML tags, we structure our document with the essential head and body sections. The head is where we lay the groundwork for styles, scripts, and other meta information, while the body is our canvas for creating a seamless user experience. Let's get into body form, but wait, we're not just building a form, we're crafting an experience. To achieve that sleek, organized look, we encapsulate our content within a section. This adds a touch of sophistication and helps structure our page for maximum visual appeal. Next, I'll add a div with the class input, and inside place an input field, set the type to text, and add a label that says your name so the user knows what to enter there. I'll copy this input section two more times, one for an email input and one for a password input. After that, I'll add in a button with the text sign up so the user can submit the form. And lastly, I'll add a paragraph below with text saying, already have an account? Log in, and make the login text a link back to the login page. So in just a few simple lines of HTML code, we've created a sign-up form with inputs for name, email, and password, as well as a submission button and link to the login page. Now let's check how this looks in the browser. I'll save the file and open it up. As you can see, we have our basic sign-up form rendered. It's looking good so far. Of course, we still need to add styling and functionality, but the HTML structure is in place. Previously, we set up the initial HTML for the sign-up form. Now let's enhance it using some classes for easier styling. The first change is I've added a class of input box to each div that contains an input. This will let me style them together. I am importing an icon script. We'll provide script details and description. Inside these input box divs, I'm adding an icon using Ionicon icons and setting the input type as icons for the name. I also imported some icons from Ionicons that we can use to make the inputs look more visual. Let's do the same for email and password. Let's take a quick look in the browser. You can see the icons now appearing next to each input. Below the inputs, a new div with class register can be added by wrapping inside already have an account input, which can be linked to login page. The sign up button remains the same. So now our form structure has semantic class names on the main containers. This will allow us to target these sections for styling in CSS. For example, we can style all input boxes or the register div separately. We've structured our HTML for the signup form. Now let's move on to styling it with CSS. CSS allows us to add visual styles like colors, fonts, layouts, effects, and more. For that first, let's create a file named style.css and link them using link attribute inside head in HTML. Let's start styling our signup form by adding some initial CSS. First, I'm importing the Poppins font family from Google Fonts that I want to use. We'll provide the link in the description. Next, I have some global styles on the asterisk selector to reset default margins and padding to zero. I also set box sizing to border box for easier sizing of elements. And I set the font family to our imported Poppins font so it applies globally. On the body, I use display flex to easily center content on the page. I also set align items and justify content to center to align horizontally and vertically. A min height of 100 VH makes it full screen height. And I'm adding a background image with properties for no repeat, centered positioning, and covering the size. So in summary, we've imported a custom font, reset some defaults, and added a centered layout with a background image. This provides a nice clean slate for styling our sign up form next. 
Let's take a quick preview to see how these initial styles are looking before moving on. As you can see, we have our Poppins font applied, the page is centered and stretched full screen, and the background image is set up. Looking good so far. Let me know if you have any CSS questions so far in the comment section. Now styling the form section container with some nice enhancements. Setting position to relative so we can absolutely position inner elements. Adding a max width of 500px to constrain the size. Making the background transparent so the blur effect will shine through. Applying a 2px solid border with an RGBA value to control opacity. Giving it sleek rounded corners with a 20px border radius. Using a backdrop filter for a cool frosted glass look. Centering the content cleanly using Flexbox properties. Adding padding to give it some breathing room. And transitions for smooth animated effects. This will style up a great form container. For the H1 heading, setting font size to 2RM to make it accessible, making the text color white so it stands out boldly on the background, aligning the text center to look sharp. This makes the heading very clear and easy to read. Let's preview how the enhanced section and H1 styles are looking. Excellent. We have a well-styled form section with the blur effect and prominent centered heading. Let me know if you have any other questions. Let's style up these input boxes for name, email, and password to really make them stand out. Setting position relative on the input box class to contain the label and icon. Adding margins between each box for clean vertical spacing. Capping the max width at 550px to keep them aligned and consistent. Applying a bottom border to visually separate each input box. And transitions for smooth animations. For the input elements themselves, giving them 100% width to stretch across. 40px height to allow easy tapping on mobile. Transparent background to show the cool blur. Removing borders and outlines for a clean look. One rem font and side padding for easy reading and spacing. White text to pop on the background. The icons are positioned absolutely to the right, sized at 1.2 rem and aligned from the top for perfect placement. The labels start halfway down with absolute positioning, then translate up smoothly on focus with CSS transitions. This creates a clean floating label effect. Changing size and color on focus as well for UX. In summary, we have accessible, user-friendly input fields with proper spacing, sizing, and alignment, styled containers, icons, and animated labels. Performant transitions for interactivity. Let's preview the professional input styling. Looking awesome. We have modern, animated input fields ready for user entry. Let's style up the sign up button and registration link. For the button, setting width to 100% so it stretches across, 40px height so it's tap friendly, rounded corners with a 40px border radius, white background color, no borders or outline, a pointer cursor when hovering, one rem font size and 600 font weight, and transitions for interactivity. On hover, the background becomes semi transparent. For the register link, 0.9 rem size to contrast with the button, white text color. Center to line the text. Margin above for spacing. The link text is set to not underline initially. White colored and bolded. With transitions again, on hover, the link underlines and changes to gray. Let's preview the button and link styling. Looking good. We have a prominent sign up button and clear registration link ready for user interaction. Now that we've styled up our sign up form, Let's add some interactivity with JavaScript. JavaScript allows us to manipulate DOM elements, add dynamic behavior, handle user events, and more. I'll start by creating a file signup.js for our code. In the HTML head, I'll add a script tag to link this JS file. This connects the JavaScript logic to the HTML and CSS. In our JS file, I'll add an event listener for the DOM content being loaded. This code will run once the HTML is parsed. Inside, I'm selecting the form section container using query selector and saving it to a variable. I start the opacity at zero to fade it in. After a short timeout, I add a transition property for smoothness and set opacity to one to fade the form in on page load. Let's preview how this looks. Awesome, the form fades in nicely when the page loads. Next. If you want, you can add interactivity for validation, submitting, and more with JavaScript. And that concludes this front-end tutorial on coding up this sign-up form component. While we built out a solid HTML, CSS, and JavaScript foundation here, there's still more we could do to make this fully functional. In upcoming videos, I plan on creating the server-side logic using Spring Boot to actually process the form submission. This will include setting up a Spring Boot project, 
Mapping endpoints to handle the signup request. Connecting to a database to save the user data. Returning responses for success or failure. Email verification. Then we can wire up the front-end JavaScript to call those endpoints and show the appropriate response messages. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for those back-end videos where we'll connect this sign-up form to a real server. For now, I hope you enjoyed learning how to structure, style, and add some interactivity to a form component like this. And as always, like this video, if you found it useful and want to see back-end content for this, please subscribe and turn the notification on. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.